And now here's my translation of the fairy tale. One autumn, the great king Charlemagne was hunting in the woods of Germany when he came upon a great stag whose rack of antlers would grace an emperor's hall. The great king gave pursuit, but the great stag led the chase in sight but never in range. Through the woods and over the over streams, the grand beast led the king and his party on for days. At last, they crossed the Limat, that's the river in Zurich. The stag leaped high and ran up the hill, then turned to watch the king. And when it had the great king's eye, the stag turned white. And as it settled down, its antlers flashed with an amazing light. The king gave up the hunt, but searched instead for folk who knew the story of the place. But all who lived there knew it was the spot where the cruel and ignorant Romans unknowingly anointed the earth with the sacred blood of the severed heads of the saints, bright Felix, deep Regula, and counseling Experantius. And so the king decreed a church be built upon the place the stag had come to rest. In spring, the work began, and the king came himself from time to time to oversee the work and give out judgments for the folk. To ensure that justice would be heeded, the great king set up a column and bell on the very spot of the martyrdom and decreed that whoever in his realm was in need of justice should ring the bell and the king's righteousness would be summoned. One day, when the king sat down to his meal, the bell began to ring. The tired king went on with his meal, but sent a servant to see who at day's end would ring the bell. The servant returned and said that no one was standing by the column and the bell. But then again, the bell began to sound. So the king advised the servant to wait and watch to see who came to pull the rope. As the servant waited and watched unseen, he saw to his astonishment a snake come and rising up the column, grasp the rope and pull to sound the bell on top. He returned and reported what he'd seen. Whereupon the great king Charlemagne rose and one went at once with his servants and knights. As it saw the king approach, the serpent bowed made obeisance and beckoned the king to follow as it moved toward the bushes at the river's edge where it had its nest. There at the bank of the Limat, the snake showed the king its nest with its three eggs. But upon its nest, a poisoned toad had come to brood upon the offspring of the snake. And then the great king understood it all and judged that the toad be condemned to death. The decree was carried out, and the king went back with his party to Das Hoch zum Loch. Das Haus zum Loch. Three days later, when the king was dining with his retinue, <clears throat> the glad serpent crept into the hall, bowed before the knowing king, and startled gathering, then wound itself around the table's leg and crept to the place of Charlemagne. There the serpent rose up and dropped the golden and bejeweled ring into the cup of the wise Charlemagne. The serpent bowed and glided silently away under each one's astonished gaze.